Magandang umaga, MPC. Welcome sa ating weekly economic briefing. To introduce our guests, we have PCOO Undersecretary Lorraine Badoy. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, good morning, Malacanang Press Corps, and good morning, everyone. Uh, buong Pilipinas, good morning. At welcome po sa ating weekly economic press briefing, co-hosted by the Economic Development Cluster and the PCOO. Sa ilalim ng zero, zero to ten point social economic agenda ng Duterte administration, lumagpas na sa 5% ng GDP ang infrastructure spending ng bansa sa pamamagitan ng Build, Build, Build program. Inaasahan naman na aabot ito sa 7% ng GD GDP by 2022. So for 50 years before the Duterte administration, the average was only half of these levels. Layunin din ng Build, Build, Build program na makapaghatid ng pangmatagalang ginhawa sa ilang dekadang pagkukulang sa infrastruktura. Ang pagtugon sa infrastructure gap ay siya ring magtutulay sa ating bansa tungo sa ating mithihin sa ilalim ng ambisyon natin 2040 na makamit ang high-income country status sa loob lamang ng isang henerasyon. Ang mga malalaking infrastructure flagship projects ay bahagi lamang ng mas malawak na Build, Build, Build program with more than 10,000 smaller infrastructure projects that are improving lives in our provinces and the countryside. Sa tulong ng kita mula sa train law at iba pang improvements sa pamamalakad ng ekonomiya, lumaki ang fiscal space ng pamahalaan para ipagpatuloy at mas paigtingin ang Build, Build, Build program. Ngayong umaga ay makakasama natin si BCDA President and CEO Vince Dison na siya ding itinalagad bilang Presidential Advisor for Flagship Programs and Projects upang ibahagi ang ilang mahalagang update at kasalukuyang status ng ating mga infrastructure flagship projects. Magandang hapon po. Good afternoon sa kanilang lahat. Um... Unang-una po, no? uh, gusto ko gang i-echo yung sinabi ni um, Yusek Lorraine uh, just a few minutes ago and ni Secretary uh, and Presidential Spokesperson Salvador Panelo yesterday. No? Um, while we respect the, you know, the, the views of our co-partners uh, in government, um, our other officials of government, um, we have to disagree with the statements that have come out in the media uh, in the past weeks and yesterday that build, build, build is being claimed uh, not to be effective. No? So right off the bat, I'm here to tell you that build, build, build is not, a, as, the, as what was said yesterday, a failure. Now, I will be showing you in a little while facts that will support that. No? Um, and I will clarify many of the issues that were raised uh, not only in the Senate yesterday, but also in other fora in the past several weeks. And I will also uh, explain to the public uh, the reason why we are now in the process of revising and reviewing the list of what we call flagship projects. So let me begin by stating the first fact, that under the Duterte administration, we are projecting GDP growth, no, ang pag-unlad ng buong ekonomiya ng Pilipinas, between 7 to 7.5 percent. May iba pang nagsasabi hanggang 8 percent by 2022. This is the fastest growth rate that the country uh, has or will be experiencing uh, by the time the president uh, ends his term in 2022. And this is not just being projected by our own government agencies, but is also being projected by various international agencies, such as the World Bank, such as the Asian Development Bank, and other very credible multilateral organizations. Now, where is that GDP growth coming from? Mostly, no? Next slide, please. It is mostly coming from government spending. 
because over the past several years under the Duterte administration from 2016 up to 2018, the government has been spending more than any other government in recent memory. No? So ang nagpapabilis ng pag-unlad ng ating ekonomiya ay malaki ang pinanggagalingan nun eh dahil sa paggastos ng gobyerno. Okay? Fact po yan. No? Next slide, please. And a lot of that growth in the economy is also due to massive growth in the construction industry, in the construction sector. From 2016 to 2018, the construction sector has been growing by double digits, no, by above 12%, close to 13%. I think in 2017, it even grew above 15%. No, or in 2018, I'm sorry, it grew by above 15%. So what does this tell us? It tells us that there is a lot of activity in construction, and in particular, there is a lot of activity in public sector construction, meaning in government construction or government projects, which, if you recall, about three years ago when we launched Build, 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 which was the main goal of the president when he launched build, build, build through his economic team, was to pump prime the economy through massive investments in infrastructure spending by the government. And next slide, please. We see that very clearly, as Yusek Lorraine correctly pointed out. If we look at the past four administrations, the Ramos, Estrada, Arroyo, and um, Pinoy administrations, the Duterte administration in its first three years in office has been spending double or more than double on the average what previous governments have been spending on infrastructure. Take note, this is actual spending. This is not planned spending, but this is actual. Yan yung dinisburse, yan yung ginastos. No? Galing yan sa ating DBM. Okay. Um, and if we look at absolute figures, in the first three years, of the, uh, in, just in 2017 to 2018, or that's probably 2016 to 2018, um, the Duterte administration has already spent almost a trillion pesos, spent, uh, spent, not planned to spend, but actually spent a trillion pesos in uh, infrastructure compared to 380 billion. Uh, in the Aquino administration, 100 billion in the uh, uh, Arroyo administration, and so forth. No, um, so these uh, these are all facts coming from our government agencies, which show that when the president launched Build, Build, Build through the economic team way back in late 2016, the plan to spend more for infrastructure has been happening. And as they say, numbers do not lie. Diba? These are actual figures. Now, if some of you will ask us right now and ask the president, masaya ba kami? Masaya ba si Presidente? Masaya ba ang economic team dito sa mga numerong ito? Maniwaga kayo, ang sagot namin, eh hindi pa rin kami masaya. Bakit? Kasi marami pa rin kulang, marami pa rin kailangang i-build, marami pa rin kailangang gawin para maibsan natin ang pang-araw-araw na hirap na dinadanas ng ating mga kababayan. Bakit natin dinadanas yung mga paghihirap na to? Dahil, makikita nyo naman yung mga figures, dahil nung nakaraang mga administrasyon at nakaraang mga taon, kulang na kulang ang ininvest at ginastos ng mga nakaraang pamahalaan sa infrastructure. No? And kaya nga ngayon, sabi nga ni Secretary Tugade, we are at least 20 years behind. 20 years, two decades behind. So kailangan tayong maghabol. We have to play catch up. So if you ask us, are we happy with the results? They're okay, but we're not happy. And that leads me now to why um, 
we are looking at and uh, revisiting the initial flagship projects list. Because what we wanted to do was look at the list, revisit it. Why? Because it's the halfway term of the president. And uh, we want to be able to do more, and we want to be able to fast track and uh, even speed up the infrastructure program in the uh, second half of the term of the president. Um, and we wanted to rationalize, no? because you know, infrastructure projects are not easy to do. They require a lot of planning. They require long and very tedious uh, uh, feasibility studies, um, detailed planning. And it takes time. No, it, it, these don't just, you know, a, a, an airport or a seaport or a, or a train. Hindi yan parang uh, mushroom na kabuti na, ano na lang, no? na umuusbong na lang. No? Um, matagal na proseso yan. And we wanted to look at the projects that are most urgent to address the most urgent needs of our people, covering the entire country as much as possible. Um, and at the same time, projects that even if they will be completed after the term of the president, we must begin now. So that was the goal, no? Because there is one word that is very important to the president. And that, uh, unfortunately, uh, we lacked in the past. And that word is continuity. No, we all know the stories. New administration comes in, projects get canceled, projects get discontinued, projects uh, get scrapped. And for, for in, in some cases, for political reasons. No? I think it is only President Duterte that has not done that. No? He, he really set aside politics and just genuinely looked at what will be good for the majority of our people. And, uh, that is what we are trying to do. So um, just to give you and to clarify some issues. No? Um, next slide, please. We have already completed several projects. You know, Build, Build, Build is an 8 trillion, estimated 8 trillion program um, that covers thousands of projects. You can ask DPWH. Secretary Mark Villar and Secretary Art Tugade, who are the prime agencies involved in Build, Build, Build. And they will tell you there are thousands of roads, highways, bridges, seaports, uh, airports. Ngayon, mga riles na papasok. Ang dami niya. But we need to have a list of what we, what we call flagship projects. By the way, we didn't invent this. No, The flagship program was invented, uh, set up, I think the first one was during the time of President Ramos. Um, and uh, what we're trying to do now is we are revitalizing that in order to give the government um, a way to prioritize and a way to focus its energies on the biggest and most urgent and game-changing projects. So what we have completed thus far, and these are just examples, and there are a lot more. No? I'll leave it up to uh, DPWH Secretary Villar and Secretary Tugade of the OTR to give you more details. But just, just to give you a glimpse of completed. Ito, tapos na to, ah. Tapos na to. Um, for example, the NLEX Harbor Link Segment 10. This is the um, elevated highway uh, connecting NLEX all the way to uh, R10, no? to the port area. That's why now, and I live in, a, in a northern, central Luzon, that's why now, if for those of us who live in Central Luzon, we notice that there is less traffic in Balintawak. Why? Because there are less trucks in Balintawak. Dati, lahat ng truck dumadaan sa Balintawak, papasok ng EDSA, papasok ng A. Bonifacio, papuntang Pier. Ngayon, wala nang dumadaan na truck doon. Bakit? Dahil sa NREX Harbor Link, na ininaugurate na ni Secretary Villar at ni Presidente several months ago. Nung previous administration, wala nang nangyari dito. Hindi ito gumagaw. No? Nag nagsimula lang to. Uh, early on during the term of President Duterte, and now it is completed. Completed yan. I mean, dumadaan ako dyan, and I can tell you for myself that I've passed that road, and it's completed. But that's only one segment. That's just segment 10. That will continue, and the plan is to actually extend this all the way to Anda Circle uh, in uh, Ross Boulevard, nowhere near uh, Manila Hotel is, near Intramuros. No? So that is part of, the extension of that is part of the 
flagship projects. But that is already completed. Next, Governor Miranda Bridge in Davao del Norte, completed, inaugurated by President Duterte in May of 2017. Next slide. Laguna Lake Highway. If you talk to the people in uh, Taguig and uh, Rizal and Laguna, this was a project that practically did not move in previous administrations. But Secretary Villar, with the help of the local government units, the provinces of Rizal and Laguna, completed this project in April of 2019. I think they started construction here early 2017 or late 2016. Now it's completed. May bike lane plan. It's the first highway with a bike lane. Uh, it was inaugurated already by uh, Secretary Villar and the economic team. Si Senator Pia Cayetano nagbike pa dyan. No, tapos na ganyan. Complete, completed na yan. Next. Pigalo Bridge. No, this is in Isabela. No, also completed already. Next. TPLEX Pusarubio. Again, you know, I just wanna already say this. TPLEX was struck, uh, uh, started way back in previous administrations. But under this administration, we completed the Pusarubio exit. Uh, the Pusarubio interchange. That is one stop before Baguio before the entrance to Kenon Road. Now we are building the Rosario, and then we're going to extend that all the way to uh, San Fernando, La Union. No? And that is also part of the flagship project. By the way, all of these are no longer in the list of 100 because they're already completed. Next. Bohol Panglao International Airport. According to Secretary Tugade, when the Duterte administration took over and Secretary Tugade took over as DOTR, there was nothing on that side. There was nothing in the Bohol Panglao side. This was started, I think, GMA time by the No, but there was nothing there. I think there was just dirt. And then it was started, and in 20, late 2018, it was inaugurated. And now there are new flights uh, coming in and out of Bohol International Airport. And this was built with the help of the Japanese government through JICA. Again, also completed during this term in uh, 2018. Uh, what is now in the flagship list is the operations and maintenance of this, uh, which under the hybrid PPP scheme of the Duterte government, uh, it is among the more than 20 plus PPP projects that is in the new flagship list. By the way, that's also one of the reasons why we revisited the flagship list, because we added several PPP projects to that list. So uh, this was just approved by the NEDA ICC last week, and uh, it is already at the advanced stages of a government approval, the O&M of this, of this airport. Next slide, please. The Cagayan de Oro passenger terminal, completed by DOTR in uh, uh, just last July of 2019. No, completed then. Started during the Duterte administration, completed already now. Next. The Cavite Gateway Terminal, also completed under a PPP uh, uh, scheme no, through the assistance of DOTR, and I think this is a project with ICTSI. No, why was this important? Because instead of the trucks going along our roads on trucks from the harbor in Manila to Cavite, now they can go by barge. They don't have to go on our roads. That's less trucks on our roads, less traffic, less congestion, less pollution. Again, completed in June of, inaugurated in July of 2018. Also completed. Next. The CNS ATM system. You know, this is a uh, IT infrastructure for radar systems that has greatly resulted in efficiency in all our airports. This was a project, and I remember this, this was a project that dates back, I think, to the time of President GMA. It was not implemented, and now fully implemented under the term of the president. Why is this important, even if this is not a, you know, a, build, a hard infrastructure? Because with this new system, our air traffic controllers can have aircraft uh, land and take off from our air airports more efficiently. What does that mean? It means less waiting time in our airports. I, I'm sure you still recall the days in the past years where we would wait so long uh, for planes to take off and land, where you know planes would hover uh, 
um, above Naia for like 30 minutes, one hour. But now that has been greatly eased because of CNS ATM. So also completed. Sorry, I'm going to speed this up so we'll have more questions. Ne next. Of course, New Clark City Phase 1A um, is completed and in, we're inaugurating it. Um, the president is inaugurating it uh, this November. Uh, and the Sea Games facility, some of you have probably seen it. Um, and it's done. You know, completed already in 18 months. All of that completed. Misa nga napagkakamagan na drawing yan, pero maniwala po kayo sa akin, totoo po yan. Hindi po yan drawing. Next slide, please. Okay. So I want to put all of this on record. Out of the 100 um, flagship projects in the list that we will be submitting to the Senate uh, today, no? um, there are 35 ongoing projects in the, in the list of 100. There are 32 projects that will be commencing construction in the next six to eight months, meaning these have already gone through the rigors of government approval, uh, et cetera. Um, 21 are in the advanced stages of government approval, meaning they, are, they have either been approved already at the ICC level and just require another step or already advanced. And then 12 out of the 100 are in advanced stages of feasibility study. No? Um, one of the reasons why we revisited the list of 75 is because, as Secretary Pernia and Secretary Villar pointed out, there were some projects in that list that after the feasibility studies, they were um, found out to be not yet feasible now. They, could, they may be feasible uh, in the future, but not yet now. Because as you very well know, um, especially for those of you who cover, who've covered government for a long time, NEDA requires a, a threshold economic rate of return, meaning if a project does not have an economic rate of return uh, of 10% or higher, we won't implement it. Why? Because we don't want to build white elephants. Now, we don't want to build something that uh, is not yet feasible as of this time. They could be feasible later on, uh, but not yet as of this time. So we had to revisit and... Um, and uh, put in projects that are urgent but are already, uh, that we can already start no, now. This includes several PPP projects. Um, next slide, please. Now, in the list of 100, this is our estimation. No? Uh, give or take, no? give or take. This is what we believe we can achieve. 38 out of the 100 completed by the end of the president's term. 38 out of the 100, roughly 40%. 22, per, 22 out of the 100 partially operational or substantially completed. Ibig sabihin, kung kalya yan, at four lanes yan, may two lanes ka na. Nadadaanan mo na. Kung tren yan, hindi pa tapos lahat ng stasyon, pero may mga stasyon na tapos na, pwede nang gamitan. Yun ang po ang ibig sabihin ng partially uh, operational or substantially completed. And 40 to be completed beyond 2022. But all, and uh, dapat gakihan natin yun, pero all kailangan maumpisahan. That is the goal. Why is that the goal? Because the goal of build, 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 first of all, no, I just want to, and this will be my final, ano, no. um, build, build, build never promised that we would complete all these infrastructure projects in uh, uh, five or six years. That's impossible. Impossible. Nobody promised that. But what we promise is, number one, we will start. No? That's, believe me, there have been projects collecting dust in government agencies that have taken uh, decades to start. Just to start, huh? decades. So the most important step is to start. So our commitment, and uh, thank you to the operator, uh, all <laughs> will be started. I sorry, Boma. Um, uh, 38 completed, 22 partially operational, substantially completed, 40 will most likely be completed beyond 2022. That is our honest assessment. No, that is our honest 
to goodness um, estimation of these flagship projects based on the estimates of the implementing agencies. So with that, I think that's the last slide. And we just, while we do the Q&A, we just want to maybe show you a lot of um, some video and uh, some um, pictures of uh, completed projects and ongoing projects uh, that uh, some of them that are already uh, underway now. So finally, I just want to emphasize the point. Is build, build, build a failure? Absolutely not. And the numbers speak for themselves. No, construction is up. Public spending on infrastructure is up. Um, and this has led to faster economic growth. Are we happy with the progress? We could do better, and we admit that. I think, I think the president is the only pre leader who actually says, you know, that's nice, but we want to do better. No, and why does he want to? Why do we want to do better? Because the, you know, the, the 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 difficulty, the hardship that our people endure every day, can't wait. We have to do this quickly, but it's not easy. It's very challenging, but we are committed to getting all of these started, completing as many as we can, and substantially completing uh, a, substan a, a, a significant number of these projects so that we will be building enough momentum for the next administrations to hopefully continue all of these things for the benefit of everyone. Tabi na muna natin ang politika, tabi na muna natin ang Ang, 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 ang personal na interest, kung ano yung makakabuti sa kababayan natin, ituloy natin. So that is our commitment to the Filipino people and to everybody. So thank you very much and I'm now ready for any questions. Maraming salamat, uh, Sir Vince. Let's now uh, take questions from MPC Maricel. Uh, Dreo. Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, just a quick clarification. Because, uh, sir, yesterday, Senator Drilon mentioned na 9 out of 75 flagship projects yung ongoing yung construction. So I just would like to clarify kasi mukhang iba yung figures natin. So paano yeah. natin pagpapangin? So, you know, that was in the initial um, report of NEDA, I think, several months ago. But like I said, um, very recently, the president has asked the entire economic team to revisit the list, to revisit the list and to look at the projects that we cannot even start because you know um, they 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 don't have the they don't meet the threshold of NEDA for us to start them uh, or build them now, um, and also to look at other projects that are urgently needed, including a lot of the PPPs. Remember in the in the previous list, halos wagang PPP don, if I'm not mistaken. No, so um, this is why we are writing the uh, the Senate, um, and uh, we want to thank uh, the Senate, Senator Drigon, Senator Lacson, and the other senators for for pointing this out because you know this is a, a this is a partnership. No, the Senate and Congress is there to 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 look at. The, and to exercise oversight over the executive. And this is part of the way our government works, and we welcome this. No, but now, we, what we are saying is, there is a revised list, and out of the revised list, this is the status. So it's not updated anymore, yung no. hawak na figures? No. Okay. So we are updating it today. In fact, we are writing the mm -mm. Senate. Uh, we are sending an official letter today, um, and with that letter will come the revised list. So sir, in terms of percentage, uh, ilan na doon sa, sa 100 flagship projects yung ongoing na yung construction? Maybe we can put up the slide. I, I, I showed it earlier, okay. but we can put it up again. Uh, sige, sige, we'll just have the no, figures no, it's okay. later. It, it's good to, to, to always you know, uh, recall and refresh. No? So 38 ongoing. Okay. 38 out of the 100 ongoing. Um, no, sorry. 35 ongoing, sorry. 32 to commence construction in six to eight months. Uh, 21 in the advanced stages of government approval, um, NEDA, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 12 in the advanced stages of feasibility study. Okay. So this is the breakdown. And I hope the math is right, and that should total 100. 
Sir, si Representative Salceda is saying that he's planning to file a bill uh, seeking for to give the president an emergency power to fast track yung implementation ng build, build, build. So what do you think about this, sir? Uh, the president, I think within the first few weeks or first month or so of his, of, of his government, actually asked for that. Mm -hmm. I think it was his first sauna that he asked for emergency powers to deal with the... Um, problems that we are facing with respect to infrastructure, which leads to these daily problems of traffic and congestion. However, um, Congress has not acted on it. No, and uh, I think the, right now, the, it is the position of the executive, uh, and the president himself has said it, na parang, I mean, medyo ano na eh, late na rin. Um, so we'll do with, with uh, what we have, um, but of course, you know, any efforts on the part of Congress to assist the government uh, through is very, very welcome. No, and you know, <coughs> Congressman Salceda is one of the best minds in Congress now. And uh, if he feels that um, this is necessary and this can be passed in Congress, then I'm sure the executive will welcome it. But right now, I think the, the, both the President and Secretary Tugade are, are not really asking, it for, asking for it anymore. I think that's the, that's the position of government. Thank you, sir. Thanks, uh, Marcel. Henry is next. After Henry, Joseph, Pagatapos, Pia, Julian, and Bernadette. Sir, uh, obviously, my comparative between uh, the previous and the present administration. Um, my first question, ano ang mukha ng infrastructure na pinanggalingan ng kasalukuyang administration? I'm, I'm talking about the previous administration. Ilan yung mga nakatenga na hindi natapos? Ano yung mga nasimula? Kayo ang nagtuloy. If I may borrow the term, dismal. <laughs> the, the, the state of infrastructure when the president took over was dismal. I mean, I mean we, we easily forget. I mean, MRT, uh, airports, uh, lack of seaports. I mean, I mean and, and, you know, it doesn't really take statistics to, to, to know that. Alam naman natin lahat yun eh. Di ba? We go through it every day. Whether you're rich, poor, young, old, babae, lalaki, it doesn't matter. Kahit na ano. Dismal talaga. And ang state ng infrastructure natin hanggang ngayon ay dismal pa rin. Totoo yun. I mean, there's no debate. That's why we all have to come together and work on this. There's no choice. I mean, these things are not going to sprout like mushrooms by themselves. We've got to do it. We've got to get these projects off the ground. And we really want to work with everybody, especially our legislators, um, our senators, our congressmen, our, our governors, our local government executives. We want to work with everyone. This is infrastructure should be, build, 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 should be the modern call for bayanihan. Because we all know that the state of infrastructure in the Philippines is dismal, especially if we compare it to, to, um, to our neighboring countries. No, and it's not going to be, six years is not going to be enough. Not going to be enough. It's got to be continued. That's why momentum is key. That's why, by the way, I failed to mention this. This list of 100, by the way, is an evolving list. Hindi yan, yan nga. Pag merong kunyari, merong mga bagong, let's say, unsolicited proposal from the private sector, na maganda at uh, makakabuti sa ating mga kababayan at uh, sisiguraduhin natin na hindi naman agraba agrabyado ang gobyerno, then dadagdag natin yun. No? Pero sa nakalipas na tatlong taon ng administrasyon, ilan ang tulay, ilang airport, ilang uh, mga infrastructure flagship program ang po pwedeng sabihin na Natapos ito na. ay... Duterte administration ang nakapagpatapos. Uh, 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 una, um, Henry, no? um, kanina nagbigay ako ng mga example ng mga natapos na. No, natapos na yung Bohol Panglao Airport, natapos na yung Harbor Link, natapos na ang Laguna Lake Expressway, yung Pigalo Bridge. I mga examples lang yan. Marami pang ibang natapos. No? Um, at ang makakapagsabi sa atin ng detalyeng yan, napakarami kasi, Henry, no? Um, ang ating mga 
primary implementing agencies, ang DOTR at DPWH. According to DO, DPWH, I think they came out to the press release just today, 9,000 ba kilometers of new road has been built since the Duterte administration took over. 9,000 kilometers. I mean, I can't even imagine 9,000 kilometers. No? So, pero alam mo, I, I just wanna, ano no, uh, gusto ko lang balikan yung tanong mo, no? Para sa administrasyong Duterte at lalo na sa presidente, hindi kasi importante yung credit eh. Hindi importante yung sino ba nagsimula nito, sino bang nakatapos nito, sino bang... Hindi importante yun eh. Ang importante is masimulan, matuloy, at matapos. Kasi yun yun eh. Lalo na yung matapos. Kasi ang dami nang nasimulan, ang dami nang natuloy. Ang problema, marami ding natenga, maraming hindi natuloy, maraming kinansila, uh, dahil sa iba't ibang rason. Uh, at ano nangyari? Sino ang kawawa? Tayo kawawa. Ka kawawa ang taong bayan. Diba? So, hindi po sa amin importante yung ano eh, yung sino nagumpisa nito, sino ganon. Ang importante, gawin na natin. Diba? Finally, diba, meron tayong pangulo na napakatapang, napaka, napaka strong-willed, na ang sinasabi niya, tabi nyo na lahat yung politikang yan. Diba? Gawin lang natin, simulan natin. Kung matapos ngayon, the best. Diba? Ang galing. Diba? Kasi yun ang importante, matapos eh. Ngayon, kung matapos sa susunod na administrasyon, iba ang mag-inaugurate, the best pa rin. Diba? It doesn't matter. What matters is we build the momentum because that's what we need. And you know, I, I, ano eh, ang hirap kasi nung ano eh, ilang beses ko na kasi narinig eh, um, hindi naman kayo nag-start niyan eh. Hindi naman... In the first place, the Duterte government never claimed to have started a project that did not start. Ne never. Never. We just said, in fact, halos lahat nga ng proyekto, in fact, I think lahat ng proyekto um, ng mga previous governments, tinugay eh. Well, as far as I know, I, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, walang hindi tinugay. Lahat tinugay. And um, does it really matter if this government or this administration or that administration started it. It shouldn't, hindi ba? Di ba? It's, it's the government of the Republic of the Philippines. I mean, I think we should stop branding governments as Aquino government, Ramos government, Estrada government. Kasi I think that's where the problem now of continuity comes in. Eh? Because if we're all focused on what this administration started, or what this one, then it gets into our mentality that if I didn't start it, I, it's not a priority. If I didn't start it, it's not important. Hindi dapat ganun. So I think, and I think that is where the leadership of President Duterte is strongest because he really does not care about credit. Right. Last question, uh, sir. Magkano na po uh, uh, in total ang talagang na ilabas ng Duterte administration sa infra, build, build, build project po ng gobyerno? Our latest estimates, I think about a, a trillion already. No, I think I don't have the numbers for 2019, but I think we're talking about a trillion for the first two years, and then we're we're gonna look at um, maybe even more than that uh, in 2019. But as you can see, nga, alam yung yung sa ano, no, sa, sa economics, no, ang GDP natin yung yung paglago ng ekonomiya nang gagaling yan sa maraming mga sources, eh. uh, yung uh, investment, yung pribadong uh, uh, investment yung uh, pagkonsumo nating lahat, yung paggastos natin, kapag marami tayong pag lumalaking kita natin, gumagastos sana ng mas malaki, tumataas ang GDP natin. Pero ang pangatlo na napakaimportante ay yung tinatawag nilang government expenditure. No, yung uh, G, no, sa economics if you recall your uh, college macroeconomics. And as you can see from the data, uh, maybe we can flash that again. The government expenditure has been growing at a steady rate. And a huge part of that growth is coming from public infrastructure spending, which uh, we can see compared to other previous administrations, we've more than doubled that already. So these are hard numbers. No, these are not, these are un, uh, undebatable. No, this is actual uh, expenditure. No, now, um, are we happy with it? No, we're not. We want to be able to spend more. We want to be able to disperse faster. We want to be able to. To, to, to spend faster. No? Um, 
while we've already achieved a lot, we're not contented. We're not satisfied. We want to do even more. That's why I think that 6% wants to go is is the goal is to bring that up to even seven or seven and a half percent by 2022 all right thank you sir joseph mike please salaman hi sir good afternoon hey, good afternoon uh sir can we go back to 2016 when the yes the triple b projects have been proposed how many projects do we have initially in the original nether list, that was, I think, 70. That, no, 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 sorry. Huh? The flagship list, remember, no, there's some confusion because Joseph, no? Build, build, build is composed of thousands of projects. It's total infrastructure, everything from, uh, from uh, a road roads, somewhere, so yeah. bridge somewhere, etc. But out of that um, universe of, of, of projects, uh, there are what they call flagship projects. So the these big are big ticket items. I mean, sorry, big ticket the, items. The big ticket, the, the game changing, you know, whatever you want to call them, you know. And these are um, obviously fewer than the universe. No, mm. the initial flagship list was seventy five. There were some there that were still undergoing a lot of feasibility studies, I, in fact, I think a significant number of them um, were undergoing feasibility studies at the time. So uh, after the midway point of the administration, the president and his economic team um, decided to say, hey, uh, like any good executive, like any good manager said, hey, let's, let's revisit. Let's look at the list. Let's look at um, uh, these flagship projects. Um, and um, when, when uh, the president asked me to assist in that, um, I got involved in looking at it with the other agencies, the, primarily the Department of um, uh, Transportation, Department of Public Works, DOF and NEDA, and also other agencies. Because remember, these aren't just transport projects. There are also projects for power. Mm. I mean, you know, our, our, uh, our trains and our airports have to run on electricity, so we need power. We also need water. We, we've already felt the looming um, problems of water, of water, especially in cities like Metro Manila and Metro Cebu. Uh, we also desperately need to improve our ICT, so ICT is also there. Um, and uh, urban development. We have to try and develop new cities like New Clark City, and we also have to rebuild cities uh, like Marawi, which was destroyed um, um, by the conflict uh, two years ago. So, so it's really, no, it's really a, um, a process. Like I said, these lists are evolving. They're, they're not stagnant. They're not cast in stone. So for example, in that list, there are 12 that are in the uh, advanced stages of feasibility study. If some of these projects uh, are deemed uh, not feasible, then we will have to uh, shelve them for now and then um, uh, look at other projects that we can do. So it's an it's it's a it's it's a, it's an evolving list of priorities. All right, um, let's break down the seventy five. Seventy five initial list. How many of these have been completed? Can we jo get the thirty eight from your earlier thirty five? Joseph, earlier sorry, yeah, I I I know you know I'm supposed to answer a question here from you, but seriously, I'd rather not. Why? Because that's not the list anymore. Why are you asking me a list of seventy five when we're the government's already telling you? that the list is now 100, and that is the new list. You know, right. it's, it, let's, I, go, I, let's go then to 100. Yeah. Um, so you can break them out, 35 yung Yeah, can we just uh, pull that up? Yes. OK. We will be providing the media with a, a whole list. OK, we just have to just, we'll just submit it muna. Please allow us to just submit it first to our legislators. All right. Um, Hold on, I'd like to go back to the 75 because that's your starting point, okay? No, that's, that's not the starting no more. point. No more. No, no, no. All right. That's not the starting point. The starting point of build, build, build was all these infrastructure projects that needed to be built. Mm. NEDA identified 75 projects, okay? Of which a portion was, based on the studies, deemed infeasible. Uh, there were some that were completed, like I think there were two. Not that we're completed. No, I'm sure 
a lot of people in the media is going to spin that again, that the government only, only completed two, even if I've already shown you that we've completed several. But that's fine. You know, that's up to you. But my point is, why, why are you forcing me to talk about a list of 75 when the government is already telling you that this is a revised list? I'm not going to answer it. Joseph, when was I'm the sorry. decision made uh, by NEDA to maybe prioritize? There was a NEDA ICC meeting last week, and it was the new list was approved last week. Okay. So your new list, what was the original and the new list? Ilang ilang projects yon? Based on the assessment of the NEDA, para yung figure man lang. Uh, isandan. One hundred. And then meron kayong do we call it sh shelf? Yung hindi prioritize. Yes. So one hundred. Yung no, niyo no, wala na yung, wala na yung, obviously, yung shinelv, wala na dun sa 100. Shelv nga eh. Alright, cool. So, may we know those projects? Um, I will have to check. I think some of them are the uh, bridges, inter-island bridges, that uh, are just too uh, expensive and difficult to build as of this time. No? Uh, which includes, I think, a bridge in Mindoro, uh, a bridge uh, in uh, connecting Leyte and Bicol, if I'm not mistaken. No, there was, there was a huge plan kasi, di ba, of DPWH. It's been a plan for so long um, to build and connect the entire archipelago with inter-island bridges. But, of course, you're talking about upwards of 50 kilometers across rough seas, no? Um, and when the feasibility studies were done, they were either too expensive or the technology isn't there yet to really build them now. We're not saying that those bridges are never going to be built. But right now, government is better off using its resources, building other things that are feasible now and that are So urgent. we can use the term suspended for the meantime, those uh, projects? Yeah, yeah. And how many of this? I th if I'm not mistaken, at least, no, no, 30 were, uh, no, uh, I think, uh, I'll, I'll get the number, Joseph, uh, so, sorry. Uh, you don't have the number? No, I don't have the exact number, I don't want to make a mistake. And right now, ballpark first. Ballpark, those that were shelved. Yeah. Um, You're using the word shelf, na? Shelf. Yeah, okay. bakit? Masama ba yung word na shelf? Baka mamaya ayon yung term na yun. Ah, hindi, ginamit ko eh, so gusto ko. Okay. Okay, so... Um, I'll give you an exact number later on. Okay. And the reason is, hindi sila parang walang masyadong ROI for some, some mga ganon? Uh, yeah, you know, I, oh, sige, yeah, yes. Hindi pa siya feasible, yung returns. No? All right, you know, so in terms of history like lang, the number times, of, you know. in terms of history lang ng number of projects, no? We started with 75, bigla na damihan, naging... Uh, 100 plus the shelf ones, right? Yes. So your D BBB, uh, Triple B projects grew from 75 to 100 Again, plus X. Again, Joseph, I don't know if, you know, I, I don't know if you refuse to hear. I said build, build, build is composed of thousands of projects. You know, it, it's really... We're talking about yung mga flagship na no, no, mo. You, no, you didn't say flagship. You said build, build, build. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Eh? Because you, you, you... And I've seen it come out in media several times, Joseph. Uh, in fact, I even saw news that build, build, build has been downsized from eight trillion to four trillion. That's not true. Build, build, build is thousands of projects estimated at eight trillion. The flagship program of 100 is four, four trillion. So half of the build, build, build is roughly the flagship program. I know it's probably kind of confusing, uh, but that's just how it is. I just, I just really, um, you know, I just really don't like it when, you know, things are misrepresented, you know, and, uh, and uh, especially language is so important. That's why I have to keep on repeating myself here because, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's going to get printed in, in some other way later on. Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I have to be very clear and unequivocal. I guess it's a little defensiveness from you. No, it's not uh, defensive. It's just because you insist on asking me questions that to me, at this point, are not relevant. Sir, mag entertain lang tayo ng ibang questions. Uh, balikan natin siguro mamaya si Joseph. Skip muna si uh, Pia, Jillian, pagkatapos si Badet. Good afternoon, I, good afternoon sir. 
Uh, sir, part of the projects under the uh, part of the flagship projects also cover water. Po. How many water flagship projects are there, and how many of them are uh, specifically for our specifically water supply projects? And how soon do we expect these projects to be finished? Okay, um, um, give me uh, just a few seconds to look at it. I think there are about five, if I'm not mistaken, water projects. Um, and they're all water supply projects. You know? Right now, they're all for Metro Manila because we're still looking at other projects, uh, urgent water projects for other areas like Metro Cebu, which is experiencing a, also a major water, uh, water problem. So, like, uh, for example, no, Kaliwa Dam, the very famous Kaliwa Dam, is a priority, it's a flagship project. Now, that will commence construction next year and should be completed by 2025. Takes time. No? Matagal to eh. By the way, just some trivia on Kaliwa Dam. Kaliwa Dam was approved in 1967. 1967 na approved ang Kaliwa Dam. More than 50 years ago. And there hasn't been a major water supply project for Metro Manila after Angat. And that's why we're experiencing this problem here of, of, of water shortage. And we really have to rush these projects. So, so that's an example. Uh, another one is Kanan Dam. So there's a Kaliwa. There's also Kanan. Uh, there is also a, uh, a uh, Wawa Dam uh, that's in Rizal, but also to supply for Metro Manila and others. Sorry, I'm just looking at the list. Sir, which of these uh, water supply projects could be finished the soonest, considering the, you know, the There is a the project called Sumag. It's, a, it's not a dam, but it's a pipeline um, uh, in Quezon that will divert water from the Agus River Basin. You know, just to give you a background, no, so, sorry, uh, if, if I, if I, uh, if I, uh, no, if I talk too much about these details, because they're really important. There are a lot of rivers in Luzon that get wasted because all of the water just simply flows out to sea. We're not able to, to use that water, which just empties into the sea. And one of, that, one of those river systems in the Sheremaje is called the Agus River System. That's straddling the Sheremaje, Quezon, Rizal. So we need, um, Kaliwa is there. Kaliwa Dam is there. Um, Sumag is a pipe that uh, was started, I think, in the past administration, but was, um, uh, there was, uh, I think it encountered some technical problems, and there were some problems with the provincial government, um, and it was stopped. It was not uh, completed. So now we want to complete that, because that will be the quickest it could be finished in 12, less than 12 months. So Sumag uh, water supply project. No, in Quezon. Okay, now, Jillian. Uh, wait lang. Sir, you mentioned about uh, potential. This is out of the 100. Uh, no. this is, there, are potential, there's a, there is a potential water supply project in Visayas. Could you elaborate on that? There is it. Oh, yes, yeah. And, so uh, we're looking at, they're not in the list yet. Okay. But like I said, you know, this is an evolving list. Mm -hmm. Once we see that the projects are feasible and they are urgent, we add to them. So we're looking at also some water projects in the Visayas, Mga especially ilan, Cebu. Sir. Sorry. Mga ilan po. I can't tell you yet. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. Thank you. Sir. When, there, when there are more details. Salamat, Julian. Um, Bernadette, pagkatapos kay Andreo. Sir, may we know the breakdown of the list of flagship projects per mode of financing, per agency, ah, okay. and how many projects per category? As you said, um, yeah, we have no. five categories, sir. Yeah. Right? yeah, okay. These are, uh, no, no, sorry, I, I, I can't give you that specific breakdown now. Um, about 70% are transport and mobility. The remaining 30% is more or less equally spread over uh, power, water, uh, ICT, uh, urban development, and uh, so so in Lima, no. Um, funding, like I said, one of the major 
um, initiatives that we've done is we've added several PPPs, and there are, I think, at least 26 or 28 PPP projects in this list. No, um, and they comprise airports. Um, like you know, we just approved the, obviously the Bulacan Airport. It was already approved, uh, already signed. Uh, that's a PPP unsolicited. Uh, the rehabilitation of Naia, the uh, Sangli Airport, the um, uh, the Bohol Airport, the first regional airport. Uh, that was um, approved by NEDA just last week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then you have several ODA projects uh, and also GAA uh, projects. So ODA, you have funding from Japan, China, some from, yeah, mostly Japan and China. Yeah, but mostly Japan, actually. So we'll give you a breakdown. Can we, can we uh, no, send that to you? Para lang the, the, the specifics are there, plus the amounts. No. I just don't have the amounts with me here. Uh, for PPP projects, sir, you said there are at least 26 or 28, sir. Yeah, really I think bad. 28. Oh, may we know the type of contract per PPP project under the flagship list? Um, what do you mean by type of contract? The build, build, operate, transfer. Um, okay, a lot of them for the airports are O&M contracts. So because, as you know, the, the policy of this government is the hybrid PPP model where we build and then the private sector uh, operates it. So... A lot of the, except for um, Bulacan Airport, which is a full PPP uh, unsolicited contract, no? because that's a greenfield project. No? Wala pang airport kasi doon, so itatayo pa siya. So, um, so a lot of them are O&M contracts. Um, the, some of them are your typical BOT, build, operate, and transfer contracts. No? Um, some of the railways are BOT. I will give you again a more detailed list. I just don't wanna uh, give you all the details now until we submit this to the to Congress uh, within the day. So we'll we'll send you a, we'll send you a whole table with 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 the project, the um, location, the cost, funding source, and then the targeted um, completion time and the status. Um, may we know, sir, the total cost of the list of flagship projects? Right now, we're at four, roughly 4.2, 4.3 billion. Trillion, 4.2? 4.2, 4.3 trillion. Okay. May we know the biggest project um, in the list, sir? I mean, in terms of the cost, sir? Um, among the biggest are the uh, Kalambato Clark Railway. Uh, which is a ODA from the Japanese. Let me, because it's, it's broken up, so I'll just, let me total it. Huh? So that's about 800 billion pesos. The railway from Kalamba all the way to New Clark City under a JICA and ADB loan. Um, the new Manila International Airport in Bulacan is also big. That's roughly more than 700 billion uh, pesos. And the Mindanao Rail is also a major project. Um, the phase one is about 100 billion pesos. Yeah, so those are just examples of these huge uh, projects and that is also ODA. So you see, there's a you know there's a more rational mix. Um, that's why that's why you know I, I always emphasize that these lists are evolving. You know, so it's pretty you know uh, pointless to just keep on going back and going back. And then we just the key to build, build, build is moving forward. No, we're we're moving forward, and that's the only way to go. If we keep on looking back, a lot of things will happen here. Sorry, sir. That's okay. On those uh, projects that were shelved, sir, um, at what stage of development were these projects shelved, sir? Sorry, sorry? Uh, on the shelved projects, sir, comparing ah, them... Ah, no, no, no. Study pa lang. Uh, all study pa lang. Oh, oh, oh. All of those study projects that na were hindi shelved. Na hindi mo na Study pa lang yan. Uh, Okay. So, well, that's the first step. Eh. When you do a project, you do a feasibility study. 
you have to look at the cost. You have to look at the you have to look at the um, the how you're going to finance it, what the interest rate is going to be, what technology is going to be used, who's going to finance it, and based on all of that, um, we have to make decisions. Yeah, you know, I think that's also a testament, by the way, to to the Duterte government huh? that you, we're, we're very honest. You know, when we say um, when we first announced itong gagawin, um, other governments would probably just keep quiet and not say the oops, teka, di feasible. Eh. So, wag muna natin gawin. But, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just the way it is. You know, if something is deemed infeasible, better not to build it than build it, right? Di ba? It's better to maybe utilize uh, funds for something that's feasible now and that's also equally if not more urgent. Sir, sorry, last two na lang. Um, how much did the government spend for this feasibility study, sir? That I can't tell you. It depends per project. That I, I really don't have that information. Okay, sir, last na lang, sir. Um, what is the assurance that, um, that the PPP projects will be continued by the next administration, sir? You should ask the next administration. <laughs> but, but having said that, no, but, but it's true. I, I, I mean, we can't assure that, right? I mean, uh, you know, there's no 100% assurance. But what we're trying to do now is build momentum. It's, why is it important to build momentum? Because momentum leads to continuity. Because if a project is not started, it's a lot easier not to do it and not to continue it, right? But if a project has already been started and there is significant progress in that project, it's a little bit more difficult. It's, I mean, believe me, there have been projects in the past that were started but discontinued. But it's a little bit more difficult to discontinue a project if there is already substantial progress. That is the goal. That is the goal. To really try to build momentum moving into 2022. But again, I have to repeat, we're not going to be able to finish all of these projects. I'm saying that on the record right now. <coughs> these 100, they're not all of them are going to get finished. Thank you, sir. Salamat, Bernadette. Uh, MPC, okay ba sa inyo? Mag-last three questions na tayo. Andreo. Sir, um, from the initial 11 that is under construction, the number now is 35. Can you give us an idea what changed? Sorry, sorry? From the initial 11 that is under construction, the number is 35 now, the one you presented. So what changed? Why did it triple? Bakit um, dadami yung... Well, nadagdagan yung projects. Okay. Natagdagan yung projects na ginagay sa flagship list. Okay, okay. Yun, that's the reason. Okay, tapos sir, from the initial 8 PPP projects sa 75, naging 26 to 28. Sorry, pa ulit? Sa PPP, we're talking about PPP projects, sir. Ganon din yan. It's the same, ano, it's the same, um, it's the same rationale. Okay. It's, it's, you know, like, you know, if you're running a business, you have, you've got a three-year plan, you look at that, you say you've listed a couple of projects that you want to do. You look at it after, after sorry, you've got a six-year plan and you're running a business, you've got several projects. You look at it after three years and you say, hey, you know, this one, parang wag muna to. There are other things that we want to do. There are other urgent needs that we have now. There are PP projects that have been submitted that make sense, that address an urgent need. Let's do them. Sir, but this is, this is just being really honest. No, it's just an honest to goodness dialogue with, with you and with, with, the, with, with the general public, no, with the Filipino people. And uh, I'm not saying I'm, this list, I'm, it, this, this won't be, you ask me maybe, I don't know, six months from now, that probably won't be the same list. Sir, but there was an initial hesitation regarding PPP say, No, there was none. Because the, it was always presented as slow. And the, the yung four kilometer roads that for, took four years to complete during the Aquino administration. That was the phase yes, of the PPP. But those those were not hesitations, those were facts. Okay. So that being laid down. That in uh, the experience of previous governments, mm. PPPs took a long time to get approved. And second, they were riddled with very disadvantageous provisions okay. that expose future governments to potentially huge liabilities. We've seen it. We've seen it already. How much has the government, um, how much has the government paid 
in arbitration cases left and right because of provisions such as this. So the economic team led by Secretary Dominguez just laid down the, the new policy that PPPs uh, must be, as Secretary Dominguez always says, PPPP, public-private sector partnerships for the people. And what does that mean? They are advantageous to government. They don't have these disadvantageous provisions, especially those that impose very stiff fees on the using public. Um, and we are able to uh, get the projects off the ground faster. And, um, but now, as you can see, now that the economic team has addressed those concerns, now there are a lot more PPPs. As, like you said, they've tripled, no more, yeah, or more than doubled. Okay. Sir, I'm sorry. You, I know you said you refused to answer this question, but I think this is a pertinent question that must be asked okay. because it was the government who chose these 75 projects initially. Yeah. And yes. then you ended up finishing only two in the span of three years. So what happened? We just want to know if, if, if the feasibility studies yielded that it's not feasible, it's fine. But we just deserve, the public deserves an explanation why this happened. So why, this, why did this happen? Well, it happened because um, out of the first 75 that were, that were initially approved by NEDA, that was the result. It's the result. Nobody is dis disputing that result. No, nobody's disputing it. But what we have also told you today very clearly is that several projects have already been completed. For example, I'll give you an example. No? Bohol Airport was not part of the 75. But to our mind, is that a flagship project? Yes, it is. So, so did you choose the wrong projects to highlight? Because... That in wasn't in the initial, in the yeah. initial uh, 75? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to be the story tomorrow. But yes, we're being honest. That's why we have to revisit. Okay. Diba, we chose, for example, those bridges that are infeasible. But we are honest enough to tell everybody that, hey, it's not feasible. Pa eh. Diba, hindi pa siya feasible. So, wag muna natin gawin. Sir, what challenges do you see or Marami. did you encounter in the past uh, did you see regarding this infrastructure push and how do you plan to address those? Sorry, what challenges? Challenges do you see? Like for example, the approval <laughs> process. <laughs> <laughs> the, the main project, uh, main problems, I mean, is it the approval? What slowed down the projects and how do you plan to? You know, in the past, um, government approvals, you know, have really been, um, you know, wanting no, to, to put it diplomatically. No, they, they've been wanting. And the president was the first one to call that out. Diba? Diba, nagagi siyang nasabi, oh, ang bagal-bagal ng ganyan, ang ganyan, kaya ako nagagalit. Totoo yan eh. Mabagal talaga. Mabagal talaga. Kaya nga, ano eh, kaya nga we, kaya nga we fought so hard to pass the, ano eh, the anti-red tape and all this ease of doing business legislation eh. Because talagang, you know, government, to, to a great extent, uh, is so layered and so bureaucratic that it really takes a long time for these projects to get off the ground. So that is a major challenge. Now we're trying to address that. And I think, and I'll, I'll maybe ask Neda to later on give you the statistics. I think compared to any government in the past, I think this administration has approved the most through Neda. But again, are we... Are we gloating and are we patting ourselves on the back saying great job no or not because kulang pa we still have to push more sir but the the, so, the figures say 37 mm. of the 75 were approved by the NEDA board so that's just a little over half so it was, is that fast approval uh, what happened and what can be done in the future to fast I will get my uh, statistics um, very accurate I will show you what previous governments have approved versus what we have approved. I won't say any numbers now, but I can tell you it's a lot, lot more. Now, okay. is that fast? My answer to that, no, it's not. It's yeah. not. It's still slow. We acknowledge that. It's still slow. We've got to do it faster. We've got to get these things done faster. So, I know, it's, 
Ano talaga? Mahirap. That's one major challenge. Other challenges, obviously the biggest challenge for infrastructure is right of way. That's the biggest challenge. Salamat, uh, Dreo. Uh, Okay, man. Thank you, thank you, sir. Sige. MPC, last two questions. So, last question na tayo. Okay. De, de, uh, si Bernadette muna, ilas question na natin si Ms. Vans para... Sir, clarification yes, po. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yung 4.2 trillion, sir, tama po ba yung cost yes. ng... Flat That's the sir? estimated cost. Na? Estimated cost. Um, For government side lang po ba yun, sir? No, no, no. That's everything. Ah, that that's includes everything. the PPPs. Okay. Yeah, that includes, okay. The, that includes the Bulacan Airport of about 700 billion. That includes the um, Bohol Airport, the, Pang, uh, the, the, the um, Naia Rehabilitation. Includes the MRT-7. Yeah, includes PPPs. Remember, ano ah, kaya, ano yun ah, so, um, on funding, no, on funding, just to kind of clear this up. The priority of the government is to build the projects as fast as possible. Okay? That's the first order of business, to build. Now the government, once a project is identified, now the government has to look at it and say, okay, what's the fastest way to do this? Is it through, uh, through the budget? Is it through borrowing from a... Uh, another country like Japan? Is it through borrowing from ADB? Or is it through a PPP? No? So government, the economic team has to grapple with all of those factors in order to come up with a decision uh, in order to move a project forward. But the most important thing is that we all agree that we have a list of projects that we need to build as fast as possible. No? And We've got to then balance it uh, by looking for funding sources for it, uh, whether from the private sector or from, from our own funds or from borrowing abroad. So I know it, it's, it's, it's a very uh, complex decision process, but we've just got to do it faster. And we've got to uh, get these projects off the ground faster. And that's what this government is bent on doing. Last na lang, sir, from me. Um, Doon po sa mga list ng shelf projects, ilan po talaga yung number na shelf projects, sir? I will check, ah, with Neda. Sorry, I'll check. Kahit ballpark figure na lang, sir. But alam ko, out of the 75, there were around 20 plus, no, that were um, not not included in this 100 list. Mo, a lot of them were because of feasibility studies. Uh, well, two of them, as you always uh, point out, uh, were not included anymore because they've already been completed. Uh, but the others, I'm not sure. I will have to get back to you. I will find out from the agencies. Uh, because ano yan eh? the agencies, the PWH, the OTR, and the other agencies, they make the call. Eh? They say that, okay, Initially, this is a flagship project. After, you know, maybe some challenges that were met, you know, there's a better project that's more urgent that we can start now. Let's put that. This is, this is just, uh, no. this is just um, a process that we have to go through, uh, just like any organization. You have to go through a process of revisiting, of reassessment, and this is the result. Sir, sorry, last na last na talaga. Aside from the bridges, sir, na na shelf, from the comparing the um, the new list and the old list, sir, ano pa po yung pinaka notable dun sa mga na shelf na projects, sir? I think there was a water project, no? I think uh, an another water project. Sorry, I I, I don't wanna ano eh. Uh, uh, maingat kasi ako magsabi ng mga my information and the Sigurado. So there were can we just get back to you? I will get to Neda and ask for that detailed list and then send it to the PCOO so that they can distribute it. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. But it, uh, 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 last question na, Ms. Bansa, para maganda yung natin. <laughs> sir, just to ano, yung pag uh, revise 
nung list, and coming up with a list of 100 rather, of uh, flagship projects, was it a matter of reprioritizing? Kumbaga, did the new projects in the list Partly come yes. from the universe, the bigger, as you mentioned, universe of projects Partly already yes. existing Partly in yes. the... Partly yes. Eight trillion, yun yes. yung tama. Partly yes, and okay. some were also new, like the yeah. unsolicited that came in, okay. which were not part of the original. Set. Is that also the reason doon sa spike, biglaan doon po sa ongoing construction? Kasi as of April nga, 11 lang yung ongoing construction, and then now, yes. biglang ano, That's because right. they were already being constructed, but they were outside that yes. list. Okay, thank yes. you, sir. That's right. Thank you, Ina. Last question from uh, Van Hernandez. Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Dizon. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Earlier. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Dizon. Yes, ma'am. Please pay attention. I am. <laughs> <laughs> sir, uh, you have uh, earlier you have mentioned that it's not a failure. This build, build, build program. So contento kayo sa performance. Hindi po. So you're not, it's just hindi po, no elaboration on that uh, matter. I don't know how to further elaborate on that, but let's just put it this way, ma'am. We disagree that it is a dismal failure. And the numbers, I think, speak for themselves. Infrastructure spending is up, way, way up, double, in fact, more than double. Um, and this has resulted in real gains in the economy. It's very clear. Um, but yung sa tanong po na contento po ba kayo, hindi po. Kaya nga po namin, kasi kung contento po kami, wala na po kaming gagawin pag ripaso ng itong mga listahan na ito. Hindi na, basta, bahala na lang, kung ano na matapos, kung contento po ang, ang, ang Pangulo at ang kanyang team. Pero dahil nga po hindi kami contento, nagkakaroon ng reassessment. Kung baga, kung baga sa ano, retreat, eh, parang inward, uh, ano ulit, Ano, uh, we want to see, we want to look uh, in our hearts and see, are we doing uh, enough? And we feel that we are not. No, we need to push some more. We need to get more projects off the ground. We need to build more momentum. And I think that is the, the clear differentiator of the president and his team that we are willing to stand in front of the public and say, you know, it's okay, but, you know, we can do more and we should do more. So, yun po, yun lang po, ma'am, ang aking pag-elaborate. Okay, sir. Uh, you have mentioned, ano, lahat ng mga infrastructure. Now, you have not mentioned what is the goal of this program. We know that this will be the, the third legacy. Mm. Come a time. I think the goal, the clear goal, and the president has articulated this several times, is to build infrastructure, to build, 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 to make the lives of every Filipino better and more comfortable. That is the end goal. At the end of the day, this is not just about building an airport or building a port or building a bridge. It's to make the lives, the day, especially the daily lives, yung pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay ng ating mga kababayan, eh, mapabuti naman natin. So that is really the goal of infrastructure. And um, um, that's why it leads me again to, to answer your question, contento ba ang gobyerno? Hindi po. Kasi, ang dami pa rin nagihirap sa traffic. Ang dami pa rin uh, pumipila sa MRT. Diba? Nag-improve nag -improve na naman, pero hindi pa rin dun sa gusto ng, gusto ng Pangulo na talagang parang uh, first world na tayo. Wala pa tayo dun. But it will take time. Kaya nga po hindi kami contento kasi ano eh, yung time, eh, dagdag na pahirap yun sa mga kababayan natin. Eh. And, ano na eh, I think you know, our people have suffered enough and we really need to just keep on pushing this and, and just uh, working... <laughs> doing whatever we can to get these things built as fast as possible. So, sir, last one yes, lang. Okay, uh, to add more, no? Kasi no parang problem. sinasabi nyo, I'm asking the goal. So, ang dagdag natin dito, sir, 
if I may, yes, you'll not get mad. No, ma'am. Reduce poverty. Yes. I, I'm sorry. Oh, Reduce, yes. Reduce, yes. Poverty. Definitely. You did not Abs mention. Absolutely. Reduce poverty. Yes. Absolutely. That is a macro goal. Mm -hmm. um, definitely to reduce poverty. Um, there are goals to, uh, to reduce poverty, improve our competitiveness, etc. But at the end of the day, as they say, no, we just want to make the lives of people better. And that, and giving them higher incomes, make, um, having less people below the poverty line, that's also part of it. But yung ano lang, yung talagang madali nating maintindihan, madali nating ma, ma grasp talagang mapabuti lang natin ang buhay ng mga, ng mga kababayan natin. I'm sure si Yusek Lorraine, paulit-ulit na. I think she's, she was even one of the first people who coined comfortable life for all. So. Sir, just a short answer. Agree po ako. Yes, just a short Reduce answer. Reduce uh, How many percent are not completed? Okay. Uh, can I just go back to that slide again? I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> so, no. okay, you just tell that uh, as later na lang. So, we, we showed it kanina, no? We showed, madami pa po. Napakadami. Yeah, out of the flagships, obviously, 100 of those are not yet completed. Di ba? Kasi yung mga completed, wala na sa list eh. Completed na yun eh. Salamat, sir. Uh, magbibigay okay. naman ng, ano, eh, ng uh, handouts mamaya. Eh. Maraming salamat po, uh, BCDA President and CEO Vince Dison. Thank you very Maraming much. Maraming salamat, Yusek Lorraine Badoy. Balik tayo sa PTV4, Radio Pilipinas.